If this occurs, your plan is just to stall as long as possible. What will happen is that in the time it takes for them to chase or kill you and then run back to lane, they'll have lost the entire first wave of turret. This means you're basically guaranteed a level damage. Which is As many of you have pointed out, my keybinds are a bit unusual. I already knew this, but honestly, I forget most of the time. When I posted clips from my stream that featured keyboard cam on my cane top guide, the fact that my keybinds were showing right out in the open for everyone to see didn't even cross my mind. It appears that most people are completely mortified about it as well, so I'm here to tell you that my keybinds are objectively the greatest keybinds known to League of Legends history. In this video, I plan to go over what my keybinds actually are, why I ended up using them, and what the advantages and disadvantages of using said keybinds are. So to just provide a general layout of what my keyboard controls actually are. For starters, I have a lot of stuff completely unchanged. My skill buttons are on Q, W, E, and R, my summoner spells are on D and F, and my item actives are on numbers 1 through 7. I've got shop on P, emotes on T, taunts on control plus number keys, and that champion window thingy on tab, all of which I'm pretty sure are default but honestly forget. Now for some of the differences. I play with quick cast spells on because I think indicators slow down your abilities too much, but I do have my quick cast with indicators bound to shift plus the skill button. I also have a keyboard that has an extremely hard time using F keys, since every F key is automatically bound to a specific action on my PC like volume up or down, brightness up or down, etc. In order to use an F key, I need to press the function button on my keyboard, and then the F key. I've tried to swap this so that the default controls are on function button and I can hotkey stuff to my F keys, but it's just not happening. That said, my select ally is binded to Z, X, C, and V. I don't use my F keys for anything. But, um... Poro, what about the... What about the, uh... What, what about... Yup, I move my camera with the arrow keys. Every time I want to move my map, my left hand takes a magical journey to the other side of my keyboard. I can explain. When I started playing League of Legends back in middle school, I didn't have the best setup. I used a Toshiba laptop with no mouse, all I had was a trackpad. This obviously changed very quickly and I soon got a mouse, but I was operating on trackpad for the first stretch. As you may know, trackpads move the cursor pretty slowly. I could hardly get my cursor halfway across the screen, much less to the edges of the map. So when I played on my laptop, I moved my map with the arrow keys. I only have two hands and no mouse, so my right hand has to do something other than left and right clicking. I can hear the viewers now. But Poro, why didn't you swap to moving the screen with edge scroll once you got mouse? This is a fantastic question. The answer is very sophisticated and insightful. When I finally learned there was even a second way to move the screen at all, it was over five years after I had started playing. Do you know what five years does to a guy's muscle memory? In fact, when I did figure out you can move the screen by moving your mouse to the edge, it was a complete accident. I recall it pretty well. I was diving a turret with Hecarim, flicked my mouse too far which sent my camera flying off into Narnia, and I died pretty embarrassingly under turret while panicking in chat trying to figure out what just happened. Needless to say, 5 years of built-in muscle memory was not changing. In fact, if I had my way, there would be a setting that completely turned off moving the camera in this fashion. All it ever does is screw me up in spots where I would have been perfectly fine otherwise. Anytime my camera control does go haywire, it's because I accidentally let my mouse travel too far to the edge of the screen. So yeah, it looks a little funny to see my left hand essentially permanently spazzing out all game and every game as I swap between my arrow keys and QWER at light speed, but you'd be surprised at how easy it is for me. I can swap back and forth every game without looking, or even thinking about my keyboard at all. It's completely natural for me at this point. Okay, so that covers the what and the why. Now I get to talk about advantages and disadvantages. There are certainly some of both, and there are enough advantages that I am 99% confident that I will never attempt to swap my muscle memory back to standard camera control. I'll start with the advantages. I've always had extremely small and inflexible hands. To give you an idea of just how bad it is, I've got two unfortunate truth bombs about my keyboard management. Firstly, using shift to sprint when my movement is WASD actively hurts my hand. I have a small ass keyboard with keys that are pretty close to each other, and I can't properly sprint in Minecraft without my fingers getting super tired. 
Secondly, I press almost every single key with my pointer fingers. I type with just my pointers, and even more egregiously, I press 95% of every button in League of Legends with just my left pointer finger only. So what does all that have to do with my keybinds? Well, for one, it means I'm never getting Carpal Tunnel for my entire life. My entire hand moves as one big block across the keyboard at all times, which means my fingers and my wrist are barely ever strained. I can play League of Legends for 10 hours a day, 30 days in a row, and never have my hands be physically exhausted in any way. When all of you are 50 years old and falling off mechanically, I'll still have the exact same shit mechanics I've always had. Another big advantage is that it just simply looks way better for viewers when they watch my stream or videos. One thing I've noticed when watching other League players is that their camera movement is often super choppy or clunky. This is because they're actively moving their mouse around to the edges of the screen, whipping their camera back and forth constantly. On the flip side, my camera control is very slow and stable. Average players move in big sweeping motions, I move in tiny increments. I like to compare it to watching VR users do literally anything compared to desktop users playing the same game. When you yourself are in VR, you don't notice anything off because you're the one who's doing the stuff. However, the instant you go and check the footage, there's a constant amount of tiny little shaking here and there because your head obviously can't be perfectly still. Desktop VR is very stagnant and stable though, which makes looking at it from an outsider's perspective much less migraine inducing. Another easy example for those of you who don't play anything in VR would be being a car driver versus a passenger. When you're driving, you don't notice anything off because you mentally know all of the turns and bumps you're going to make. For the passenger though, those turns, stops, and bumps are a lot more noticeable because they don't share the same brain as you and don't know what movements you're about to do. So that said, the average player's camera movement is janky and hard to watch. I don't know when you're going to flick your camera drastically to move the edge of your screen, and neither does the average viewer. However, when all I'm doing with my camera movement is set incremental movements via the arrow keys, it's a lot easier to follow along with what I'm doing. Hey, Poro from the future here. Thanks to Yumi Extraordinaire, the Amar Show, I have learned that you can actually move your map using mouse, wheel, button, and dragging. From what I can tell, this is just vastly superior to any other method I've seen, and it completely invalidates the point I just made. Okay, back to the video. That's also grouped in with another advantage of controlling your map with buttons over mouse. We get to keep our mouse at the center of the screen at all times. This means faster and more accurate cursor clicks and skill shots. When a fight starts to veer off screen, the average player has to drag their mouse all the way to the edge of the screen, drag their screen to the desired location, drag their mouse all the way back to the enemy champion, and then finally start using abilities and autos again. Button map movers get to keep their mouse close to the enemy champions at all times and never run into the same time lag. Now this is all fine and dandy, but there are plenty of other people who move their camera with keys instead of the mouse like I do. They move their camera with WASD, and keybind their abilities to other closer keys like 1, 2, 3, 4, Z, X, C, Y, or... Q, E, R, C? Yeah, sure. Point being though, a lot of people ask me why I just don't do this. Why do you bother moving your entire hand across the keyboard instead of just using closer keys? Good question. However, remember that you're talking to a guy whose pinky can barely reach shift. That should answer that question. Okay, so what about the disadvantages? Well, there's the one that everybody thinks about instantly that isn't actually true at all, and then there's the actual disadvantage. So first, the disadvantage that people think happens, but doesn't actually happen at all. No, I never miss the keys when I'm bouncing back and forth between arrows and QWER. Like I mentioned earlier, it's all tied to my muscle memory over the course of almost a decade. In the same way people can type essays without ever glancing at their keyboard, I can bounce back and forth between arrows and QWER through pure instinct. But therein lies the actual big disadvantage to this set of keybinds, the muscle memory itself. Since my muscle memory is entirely attached to the distance between the arrows and the skills, I literally cannot function at even a bronze level on anyone else's setup. The instant you change the keyboard, I cease to exist as a real League of Legends player. To compensate for that, I use a literal HP Basics keyboard, because it's cheap and therefore easy to replace if broken. I will also be stuck with this exact keyboard for the remainder of my League of Legends career. If you ever plan on changing your keyboard model even once in your lifetime, my keybinds are not for you. Every single time I did change my keyboard setup, it took me weeks and even sometimes months to get back into the groove of where I was before. So that's it. The main advantages and disadvantages to using my setup of arrow keys for map movement while leaving all other binds relatively the same. It's accommodating for small hands and inflexible hands, it's nice around the eyes for viewers, it's more accurate during teamfights and I will never get carpal tunnel or tired hands, all at the cost of being stuck with the same keyboard due to my muscle memory being bound to distance between keys. Do I actually think it's the greatest setup of all time? Definitely not. If possible, I would highly recommend picking up a WASD movement setup. It doesn't work for me because my hands are just way too small and stiff for that many keys in such an enclosed area, 
but it's vastly more efficient than my leaping. I do have one supreme advantage at the end of the day though. As terrible human being P.T. Barnum once said, all publicity is good publicity. I stream on Twitch sometimes and also have a Discord server, links to both will be in the description. I also have a Ko-fi page and any tips are highly appreciated. Thanks for watching, bye!